Discoveries always start with an observation that doesn't fit with the way we think things work. This is the most exciting part of science to me. Research is by definition challenging. I've always enjoyed making things, taking them apart and trying out crazy ideas. Maybe just a few times in your life you think, wow, I know something that nobody else in the world knows. That's pretty special. My name is Edsa Westra and I'm professor in microbiology at the University of Exeter at the Penryn campus. My lab studies how organisms evolve in response to viruses, using bacteria and their viruses as a model. We are trying to uncover general principles that explain the diversity of defense and counter-defense mechanisms in nature. I'm interested in how the environment determines which bacterial defense mechanisms are favored one over another and how that affects the growth and evolution of bacteria and the viruses. This is important because in phase therapy, where viruses are used to cure bacterial diseases, the evolution of resistance is a major concern. We are trying to work out what factors influence the molecular mechanisms of adaptation? For the first time we've managed to predict and manipulate which strategy a bacterium adopts and we've demonstrated that this has key implications for viral persistence and bacterial virulence. When I'm not in the lab I serve on various research committees and organize and attend various conferences. Outside of work I also like to do lots of sports and spend time with my partner, Stineke van Houten, who is a research fellow here at the University of Exeter. She's also a microbiologist and a CRISPR expert, and we publish a lot of papers together. Our shared interest gives us lots to talk about. We are currently expecting twins, which is by far the most exciting project we've been engaged in together. The Blavatnik Awards are the most prestigious award for my career states, and therefore this recognition of my work means a lot to me. I would like to share the success with my talented postdocs and students who've worked so hard for the successes of the lab. The sense of discovery is the favorite part of what I do. And when I think about the future, research remains an important part of my life. My name is Eleanor Stride. I'm a professor at the University of Oxford, where I hold a joint appointment between engineering science and the Nuffield Department of Orthopedics, Rheumatology and Musculoskeletal Science. I work on designing better ways of delivering powerful but toxic drugs directly to where they're needed without damaging other parts of the body or causing side effects. This can help us treat currently lethal conditions such as cancer and stroke more effectively. The most important thing we've discovered is that we can re-engineer microscopic bubbles to deliver drugs. Usually these bubbles are used in ultrasound imaging as contrast agents. But instead of using a short pulse of relatively high frequency ultrasound, which is what we do in imaging, we use lower frequencies and longer pulses to induce a pumping action to release the drug from the bubble. Creativity is an absolutely essential component of my work. It's the combination of this with the need for scientific rigor that really makes my job so stimulating. At school, I was always torn between the arts and the sciences. It was actually my art teacher that inspired me to do engineering. It wasn't that I was so terrible at art, but she knew that I really, really loved doing both physics and art. And she took me to the Royal College of Arts uh, Industrial Design end of year show where there were some amazing examples of combining art and science and that was what inspired me to do engineering. What I want to see out of my work in the end is having a positive effect on patient care. Research is now showing bubbles can be used to deliver DNA, cyRNA and other biological therapeutics very successfully. I'd love to see new treatments for life-threatening illnesses being developed as a result of my research. My name is Tim Behrens and I'm a professor at the University of Oxford where I specialise in computational neuroscience. That is, figuring out how something apparently simple, like a neuron, can produce something complicated like behaviour. A big focus of my research is how knowledge is organised in the brain. We know a lot about how the brain encodes spatial models of the world, but we know almost nothing about how the brain encodes all its other knowledge that guides behaviour. We're showing that we can use what we know about space to begin to crack open this more general problem. For example, there are these cool cells called grid cells that tile a regular grid in space. This helps you get from one place to another, from work to your favorite coffee shop, for example. But we've discovered that grid cells also map non-spatial knowledge in the same way. Things like knowing your aunt is your mother's sister. And when we encounter new situations, these structures help guess new things about the world. 
A defining feature of my research is we build new tools to answer questions we couldn't even ask before. When we were trying to figure out how to measure brain connections, it was amazing to see how connections were organized in parts of the human brain. The tools we make sometimes have practical applications. For example, our tool for measuring brain connections is used in neurosurgery. One of my favorite parts of the job is spending time with interesting people. Young scientists are a constant inspiration and really push me to keep exploring. Parenting is cool when you're a neuroscientist. I've definitely learned things about the brain by watching the kids learn new things, like tennis. My friends have invented a motto for me. Scientific research sparkles my life, and it's true. My advice to younger scientists, make sure you have an end goal that you truly believe in, and don't give up. I didn't even realize I could be a scientist until I was an adult. Now I'm always thinking about what's next. Every day is an adventure.